Welcome to the My Creative Days podcast, where we will talk about all things DIY, home decor, decorating tips, and creating a beautiful home on a budget. I am hoping our time together will spark a creative idea, help you plan your next DIY, or inspire you to finally tackle that project you keep putting off. Grab your favorite cup of motivation and let's chat. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to talk about your thrift stores and six areas inside the thrift stores that you should not sleep on. Like these are areas in your thrift store that um, that you definitely need to make sure that you're looking through when you um, are are inside the store. So a lot of <clears throat> a lot of you know the more um, obvious areas like furniture and um, you know certain areas that uh, you are, you know, in your thrift store are a little bit more, I don't know, I I guess obvious is the word that is coming out, but, or that I'm thinking of, but there, there are reasons to stop at these other areas in your thrift store um, to just check them out. And actually there's one I'm going to, if you are somebody, this is kind of on, as a side note, I just thought about this, but if you are somebody that likes to um, thrift for clothes at the thrift store. You know, if you like to look for clothes and stuff at a thrift store, always check the, um, there's usually a rack or something right outside the dressing rooms where people, you know, they may have tried something on and then they, you know, they put it there and then the, the employees put it back, check that rack. And secondly, um, right outside the dressing rooms, if like in the way that some of our thrift stores are set up, um, right outside some of the dressing rooms, there's like, you know, there's like a rack of clothes, like, you know, normal clothes, but people will just put stuff in that rack um, as they're coming out of the thrift store. Like they don't know where to go put it if it doesn't fit or it doesn't work out. So always right there. It's so funny what you can find there. And um, if you don't thrift for clothes at, or you don't look for clothes at a thrift store, that er- those areas are still good because Sometimes people will be waiting for somebody, you know, that's trying on clothes and then, you know, they may be going through their cart, you know, as they're just sitting there waiting by the dressing rooms and they may set stuff down, um, not necessarily clothes. So um, that's just a little bonus one. I guess there's seven areas that I'm talking about today, but those are kind of um, hidden gems uh, to definitely check out in your thrift stores. So um Another area that I always look are books. Now, books are obviously books are, you know, if you read, you will look through the book section. But I, one of my favorite things is trying, is is looking for books that where I can get inspired or get ideas from. So, um, you know, like, uh, you know, crafting or decor books or, or um, like home books, those kinds of things, even from like way back in the day or you know, it's so funny. It's like the nineties anymore. It's like, that's vintage that, that just kills me to say that. But like, because whatever goes around comes around, you know, it's just like fashion. And so it just, sometimes I love looking through those books. It's, it's like having magazines for me because something I will look, you know, a photo I will look for an idea, uh, um, you know, if I'm reading through it, it will spark an idea or I would, or, you know, sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, I remember that. And that is still like, I love that. I need to add that to my home or whatever. So books, um, it's not just for what you're going to read, you know, like a novel or something, but I, oh, you know, vintage books, obviously for decor and stuff, but look for those books that, um, you know, think of them more like a magazine or just a ton of inspiration inside of them. And they're usually inexpensive, a lot more inexpensive than, um, you know, going to buy them, obviously. Um, obviously, there's the library, but I just sometimes hate that, the pressure of you got to get it done in two weeks or whatever. <laughs> so if I can find it at the thrift store, I pick it up because it's it, it's um, it's a lot less. I just found a Picasso um, large like coffee table book. Uh, and the 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 cover and the color, it's like a linen color. It's so pretty. And so I will use that as a riser on my shelves to decorate, right? So I am not just like your book section. There's a lot in there that you can find for different uses. Um, but definitely look through your book session, section. It's honestly one of my favorite areas to spend time in, in the thrift store. Um, and especially when they bring a new cart of books out, like I sometimes get more excited about that than like a new card of like decor or something coming out of the back room because I just, it's just so much fun. So 
Another area to look for that or look in, and I've said this before, but um, it's it needs to be repeated, the toy aisle. And when I say this, obviously every thrift store is different and where they keep toys and, you know, like our Salvation Army store has toys like up on top of racks of clothes, whereas like a Goodwill will have a whole aisle of toys, if that makes sense. You need to look through the toy section at all times because that is where parents, they may be, you know, sitting there with their kids and letting them play, giving them five minutes to play with something or whatever, or to look at the toys. And that's when mom or dad, (laughs) they're deciding if they're going to, you know, maybe I don't want this thing in the cart or in my basket. And then they will set it down in the toy aisle. Um, So look in the toy aisle, the children's section uh, for things that people, you know, parents probably, you know, it's probably parents because the kids are playing there, um, have set down in that area. So don't pass that area up. Another area that I see a lot of people, you know, just breezing by is the linens area. So again, this is another area where I'm not necessarily like I'm not looking for sheets or something for a bed, but it may be some vintage fabric or some vintage lace on something or some, you know, curtains or, you know, whatever it is, I may be able to use, um, you know, something in the linens for maybe I'm recovering a chair or maybe, you know, beyond just going there to look for sheets, if that makes sense. Like go through your linen section. Um, I have found some like amazing vintage linens. Like think of, this is what's coming to mind, but like not doilies, (laughs) you know, like the old handmade, like those kinds of things. Um, I'm not necessarily picking up a ton of those, but those are the kinds of things you just never know what you can find inside the linen section um, that, you know, can just be used in different ways or used as they are in your home. One of my favorite things in the linen section is when I find, I mean, I don't pick them up all the time, but vintage aprons, like from the 50s, uh, like that time frame, I have always said, I think I would have thrived in the 50s. I don't know. But <laughs> but so when I see like those old, like the 50s aprons and stuff, I just think they're so great. Um, so definitely check out the linens. Don't, don't pass up the linens. Um, the next is frames. So again, depending on how your thrift store does this, but I find so much more besides just like frames and art in the frame section. Um, so, and one thing with the frame section is you want to make sure that you are, um, kind of thumbing through the frames or the pictures, if that makes sense. So they, you know, in ours, the way they are, they're kind of stacked from front to back, if that makes sense. Um, and so you definitely have to thumb through them all to see what's there. Uh, and again, you know, you'll find mirrors in there. You'll find, um, wall hangings in there. You'll find, you know, you know, uh, like antique pictures, you know, black and white photos, landscape photos, like you just never know what's going to be in there. But I also search that area just for the frames themselves. It's not necessarily what's inside the frames. And so I have a um, blog post that, uh, that I just, I just shared this. Um, but I will find massive, like chunky vintage frames. Right. And when I say massive, the last one I found was like, it was, what was it, 36 by 48? I mean, huge. And our home, I don't have that huge wall space or, you know, a ton of wall space in our home to hang frames like that. But I still love those old, you know, gold, you know, um, ornate, chunky frames. And so we, I've been picking them up when I find them for a good price because we are able to create smaller frames. And you got, it's like the best... <laughs> If you find, the last one I just found, it was $10. And like I said, it was 36 by 48. And um, we were able to get multiple five by seven frames, smaller frames out of that. And and when you put a piece of art or just even like a printed, whatever it is, inside those, they just look so great. And anybody can use five by sevens, four by six, you know, eight by tens. Like we all have enough room, you know, because you can put those on shelves. You can put them on furniture. You can put them on, um, you know, you can hang them on the wall, obviously. A mantle, whereas like a 36 by 48 frame, you you need the wall space. You can't just set that on a shelf, right? And so the frames section look beyond what, you know, just looking for like art. There's, there's, there are other things there, but then, um, 
look at the frames themselves. Don't necessarily just look at the, the art or whatever is inside the frame. Another thing, a place to look for are um, your, your stems and florals. And I, and I, I've said that before, but this is where um, you, you want to look for. And of course, right now I'm on the hunt for some, and so I can't find any great ones yet, but it's coming. I know. But you just, because you can create so many things from the, that area. And that is another area that I see people when I'm in the thrift store. It's like literally they go from, you know, the section right before that. And then they literally just walk right by it and don't even look at it. You can save, I mean, so much money and you can create one of a kind and custom, you know, wreaths and welcome signs and, you know, whatever it is with this it, vase decor, put, um, stems for like inside iron stone pit iron stone pitchers um you know thrifted vases whatever it is uh, you can find some great things so don't skip past this um area and i thought about this podcast the lot because the last time i was in the thrift store this was happening like i was going to these certain areas in the thrift store and i was noticing that people weren't even weren't even giving it a second glance like they just weren't even they weren't looking at the linens. They weren't looking at the baskets. And so I thought, oh my gosh, if I could just tell them, stop them and say, stop here. Like you, this is what you can find here. Um, so I thought this would be a great, a great podcast uh, to talk about. Okay. Lastly, um, the basket area, again, you know, every thrift store is different, but besides just baskets, which you all know is like one of my favorite things. Like if I find an old good basket, I, I, I pick it up. But there's usually um, like organizational, um, I'm going to say baskets, but like items in that area as well. I have found so many <clears throat> like wire hanging system type things for like Gabrielle's art area and my office. And um, they usually put it in the basket section. So I always look there, you know, not only just for the baskets, because baskets are, organ you can use those to organize and I do that a ton. But there's all, they also usually put organizational, you know, supplies or, or um, things <laughs> in that area. So I'm always on the hunt for those things in the basket area as well. Obviously, you know, look for baskets and, but there's those other things inside these different areas inside the thrift store that you definitely need to keep a, an, an, uh, a look out for and don't skim past these areas. So Okay, was that all six books, baskets, linens, toy aisles, stems and florals, frames, and then my extra one by the by the dressing rooms. Um, those are definitely areas um, that you want to look for and um, look through for different things. It's not necessarily what the what they're there for. If that makes sense, like books, yeah, it's great for novels if you you know you read, but go beyond that and look for these other things. You know, same with linens and 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 all the things. Like don't. Don't just take it for face value. There's so many goodness, good things that you can find inside these uh, these areas that you can use in different ways. So I hope that was helpful. I would love to know what your favorite section is inside your thrift stores. Because I, like I said, they're all set up different. Um, so I like to hear, or like, do you have a certain area in your favorite thrift store that you always go to as soon as you walk in the door and you have found the most amazing things? I want to know what that area is. I want to hear from you guys. Um, or I would love to hear how your you know, your thrift store is set up so that, you know, where, you know, some, somebody not knowing it would not know to even go to that section, but you, you always know to look there for whatever it is. Let me know. I love those stories. Uh, you can email me at lindsay at mycreativedays.com. You can always reach out to me on Instagram at mycreativedays. I love to hear from you. Tell me what, what your thrift stores are like. And until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm grateful that you tune in every week and that you share the show with your family and friends. I love having creative chit chats with you. And my hope is that this podcast will inspire you to try a new project, start a DIY that you've been putting off and decorate your home exactly how you want it. There are a few ways you can help us with the podcast. Follow the podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you could take a few minutes to leave the podcast a review, that would help us so, so much. Again, thank you for being here, and I look forward to our chat next week. Bye-bye.